What is up? And welcome to A Scientist Looks at the COVID Vaccine Data by yours truly, Dr. Panthagani. So a couple of months ago, I was chatting with my mom about all the vaccine stuff. So, you know, it was going really fast and all the new science. And at the end of our conversation, she asked me, so do you think you're going to take it? And at this point, nothing had been approved. And so my answer was, well, I'm going to look at the data and that's how I'm going to make the decision. So that's what this video is. It's a look at the data, specifically the data on the Pfizer vaccine, which was published on December 10th in the New England Journal of Medicine. All right, so before we get into the data, just a little bit about how these mRNA vaccines work. So they're in these things called lipid nanoparticles, which is just a tiny droplet of fat, and there is mRNA inside, and that mRNA is instructions to make the COVID spike protein. So once it's injected, then the cell is like, hey, cool, yeah, I'll, I'll take you in. And then the mRNA goes inside and it meets up with the cell's ribosome. And ribosomes, all they do all day long is read mRNA and make proteins. So that's what it does. It takes that mRNA and it makes the COVID spike protein. And then from there, through some cool instructions, the COVID spike protein makes its way to the surface of the cell. And then the immune system comes by and is like, hey, who are you? You don't belong here. I'm going to make some antibodies against you. And that is how you form an immune response. So one very important note is that there's no actual virus in the vaccine. So it's just one piece of the virus. It's not the whole thing. So it's impossible to get COVID from the vaccine. All right. So now who was in the study? So it was a giant international study, people from all over the world and people that were ages 16 and older. So there was a total of 37,706 people and people were randomized into either the vaccine group, which there was like 18,000 in that group, or the placebo group, which is just a saline injection. And there were again, 18,000 in that group. And one important thing to know is that this study was blinded. So people had no idea which group they were in. So then what did they do? So they gave people two injections, so one at the beginning of the study and then one again three weeks later, and then they tracked them for both safety, so these were things like mild side effects, like pain at the injection site, things like that, or more serious side effects. They basically tracked everything that happened to their health during the course of the study. And then they also tracked efficacy, so does the vaccine work? And they did that by tracking people for COVID symptoms. So they asked them to report any COVID symptoms, and if they were having symptoms, then they took a COVID test. And if they were positive, that counted as a COVID infection. So one important thing to realize is that we didn't actually give people COVID in the study. It's not like we randomized them and then are like, okay, breathe in this COVID, good luck. No, that's unethical, don't do that to people. So instead what they did is they let people just live their lives and then people got exposed in the community. Now, before we get to the data, it's important not to get these two comparisons confused. So the first comparison is comparing the mRNA vaccine versus placebo. And that's what we do when we wanna know what is the true effect of the vaccine. So what are true vaccine side effects? However, when you're trying to decide whether or not to get vaccinated, you can't just focus on mRNA versus placebo. Instead, you have to take into account the disease that the vaccine is protecting against. And so then you wanna compare do the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risks? So now we're going to get to some graphs. And if you hate math, don't freak out. I'm going to walk you through it. So were there side effects of the vaccine? The answer is yes. So in this graph, the green bars are people who got the vaccine and gray are people who got placebo. The height is how many people reported each side effect. Now remember that the people didn't know which group they were in, so they were just telling us how they were feeling that day and had no idea whether or not they had even gotten the vaccine. If the two bars are the same height, that means people just happen to have headaches that day and it has nothing really to do with the vaccine. But if the green bar is significantly higher than the gray bar, then that shows that the vaccine actually caused that side effect. And that's what we see. So things like pain at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle pain, fever, as well as chills and joint pain, those are all true side effects of the vaccine. More people experience side effects after the second dose compared to the first dose, and the vast majority rated their side effects as mild or moderate. So what does mild or moderate actually mean? So to answer that, let's just look at one of the side effects, fatigue. So most people rated their fatigue as either mild, 
which meant it didn't interfere with their daily activity at all, or moderate, which meant that it interfered a bit with their daily activity. Maybe they weren't quite as productive as they normally were. A very small percentage said their fatigue was severe, which means it prevented their daily activity. Maybe they had to take the day off work. So how long did these side effects last? Thankfully, for most people, they only lasted a day or so and then went away. So then are the vaccine side effects basically like getting COVID? Well, no. So some of the names of the side effects, yes, are the same, like fatigue, headache, muscle aches, fever, chills, things like that. However, COVID causes more symptoms. It causes cough, difficulty breathing, loss of taste and smell, sore throat. But more important than that is the severity of the symptoms. So the vaccine side effects are something called reactogenicity. They only last one to two days, are mild to moderate, and they're actually a sign that the immune system is responding. Now contrast that with COVID. If you talk with people who've had COVID, they'll say things like, that was the most sick I've ever been in my life. The symptoms last weeks to months, many require hospitalization, and 1% die. So these are very, very different things. Now, what about serious adverse events? So in vaccine studies, they track all serious adverse events, which are any bad health thing that happens during the study, like if somebody's hospitalized, something life-threatening or causing long-term disability or death happens. And importantly, they track absolutely everything that happened to everyone during the course of the study, so most are not necessarily related to the study. And just like with the mild side effects, the way to interpret this graph is to see if the green bar is higher than the gray bar. And thankfully, they're pretty much the same, meaning the rate of adverse events wasn't any higher in the vaccine group than what we would expect just from normal life and life happening. But to be extra careful, they went back and looked at the details of all those adverse events and found that most had nothing to do with the study. It was just life happening. They did find two things that were maybe related to the vaccine, and those were swollen lymph nodes and a shoulder injury, but they were thankfully super rare. Now what about the most serious adverse event, death? They actually found fewer deaths in the vaccine group than the placebo group. There was four deaths in the placebo group and two in the vaccine group. None of them had anything to do with the study. So you have to remember that when you're studying like 40,000 people over several months like they were doing this study, there's a reasonable chance a few people will die during that period just from other causes. So the risk of death from the vaccine is super, super low. Now, some people have argued that instead of getting immunity from the vaccine, we should let people get natural immunity by getting COVID, arguing that COVID is less dangerous than the vaccine. But let's do the math on that and see if that argument holds up. If 21,600 people got COVID, which is how many people got the vaccine, how many would die? Let's use, to be conservative, an estimate of 0.5% death rate from COVID, which is a 99.5% survival. So if that many people got COVID and 99.5% survived, that would mean 108 people would die. That's way higher than the risk from the vaccine. So getting immunity from the vaccine is way, way, way safer than getting immunity from COVID. But does the vaccine work? So yes, the side effects, there's some, but they're pretty mild. But we're not going to take a vaccine, even if it has mild side effects, if it doesn't actually protect against the disease it's supposed to protect against. So to look at this, they counted up all the COVID cases that occurred at least seven days after the second dose. And they waited just because it takes some time after the vaccine for the body to develop immunity. And when they looked, they found there were only eight cases in the entire vaccine groups. Remember, that was thousands of people and only eight COVID cases. Versus the placebo group, there was 162 cases. So this clearly shows that the vaccine was protecting people from getting COVID. And if you do the math, that comes out to 95% efficacy. So that means that 95 out of 100 people who get vaccinated will be protected from symptomatic COVID infection. Now, is there any protection after the first dose? To answer this, they tracked how soon after their first dose people got COVID infections. So in this graph, if the two lines are on top of each other, that suggests there's no immunity yet, as there's no difference between the placebo and the vaccine group. And that's what we see for the first 10 days or so. The lines are pretty much on top of each other. But then after 10 days, the gray line keeps going up, meaning the people in the placebo group kept getting infected. But the green line stays flat, meaning that people in the vaccine group, for the most part, were not getting infected. So this data clearly shows us 
that the vaccine works. So that's the data in the study. So it tells us a lot. It tells us that the side effect profile, yes, there are some side effects, but overall they're pretty mild. And it shows us that the vaccine protects very well from COVID infection. But there's some things the study didn't tell us. So we still have some remaining questions that the study didn't answer. The first big one is, does it prevent transmission? And the reason we don't know that is just because we haven't studied it yet. But there's a myth going around that the vaccines don't prevent transmission. And this is false. In reality, we just don't know yet because we haven't collected the data yet, but there's a very good chance that they will prevent transmission. And why is this important? So if the vaccines prevent asymptomatic infection and transmission, that means they can help us reach herd immunity. It's estimated that we'll need 60 to 80% of the population to have this immunity in order to stop the pandemic. Right now, we know that the vaccine protects against symptomatic infection, which is awesome because that will help keep people healthy and out of the hospital. But what we don't know is if the vaccine is preventing asymptomatic infections and transmission to other people. So this is why you are hearing people say that social distancing and wearing a mask are still important even after getting the vaccine. Now, second is how long does immunity last? And so this we can answer by following the participants further. And then finally, we don't know are there long-term side effects. So the median follow-up time was two months after the second dose in this published data. Now, longer follow-up is ongoing. So, should we be worried about long-term side effects? So, the first thing to know is we're going to keep monitoring for side effects even after FDA approval. And one way we do this is through the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. Anyone can file a report to this system. You don't have to be a doctor. You can just go online to this website and anyone can file a report. And by collecting this information, researchers can watch for rare side effects that might occur that were too rare to be detected in the studies. And this is just one of several systems in place. Others include the Vaccine Safety Data Link and the Clinical Immunization Safety Assessment Project. Information gathered from all these systems are used to track ongoing safety of vaccines, even after they're approved. But one thing I wanted to know is how common are long-term side effects for other vaccines? So to look at this, I went to that Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System and I downloaded all the reports that were made in 2019. Now keep in mind, these reports aren't verified yet, so it's unknown whether or not the vaccine actually caused them, but anyone can file a report. And I found that of all the reports, 98% of people said that the thing that they thought was a vaccine reaction occurred within two months of getting the vaccine. And only 2% occurred more than two months later. So this tells me that at least for other vaccines, when people are concerned about reactions, most of them are occurring within two months of vaccination. And so if that's the case, that means our study would have picked those up. So overall, this makes me feel more confident that any long-term side effects are likely going to be pretty rare. So with all that said, will I take the vaccine? So it's a balance between the risks of the vaccine which include possibly a day or two of feeling crummy, very low risk of serious side effects, and long-term side effects that are not known but no concerning data so far, and the risks of COVID-19. So those are 1% die, many more are hospitalized, mild cases can last for weeks, and there are known significant long-term side effects like long haulers. So when I'm making this decision, I can't only look at the risks of the vaccine. Because yes, there are some, but I have to take into account that if I get this vaccine, I am drastically reducing my risk of getting COVID. So yes, there are side effects and some things we still don't know about the vaccine. But remember, that's also true of COVID. And what we do know about COVID so far has shown that it's way, way, way worse. So doing the odds, I'd way rather take on the small risk of getting the vaccine versus taking on the much larger risk of getting COVID if I don't get vaccinated. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you. If you'd like to see more content like this, follow my blog at youcanknowthings.com or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And finally, I'd like to throw a special shout out to my niece. Thank you for letting me borrow your markers this weekend to make this video.